Peace to the culture. Welcome to Culture Talk. Rashid. Yes, sir. You were deep prime. Mm-hmm. You were Rashid still. Yeah. But right now, it's just Rashid. Rashid, yeah. What happened to the name? Basically, nothing really happened. It's just that um, I evolved. And uh, you're also a part of it. <laughs> <laughs> you remember now. So, yeah, I just realized that I need to stand for something that is more original with me yeah uh, and closer to my personality and you know i want to build a name yeah uh, so instead of just adding up something maybe i came up with from the dictionary and all of that even though the deep prime still um told a little about my personality but i felt rashid is more safer yeah uh, so i just played around there and yeah like i said you inspired that too so uh, we don't really have to talk about that okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah a rapper Yes. You you are actually one of the finest ones. I've wow. always said that. Wow. You seem like a very, very conscious person. Yeah, like, I'm very conscious actually. Yeah. Um is th- uh is is that like uh something that has been with you like since from your early, early yeah. days, like before you started like because sometimes I listen to your music, I'm like, who do you actually listen to? Okay. okay. Like who were the people you were listening to before you actually got to start making your own music and stuff okay yeah so like you said it has been with me since my early stage you know about 2012 when we started up with the whole flow timer thing yeah and that i had friends who were working together doing music and all and um all through those times i was not just listening to a particular person okay i was listening to different people joey badass wow uh then before Kendrick Lamar was into the face yeah. and you know J. Cole I was listening to some of his tapes way back yeah. and one of my favorite MC then was Common and Karis One wow yeah, yeah. you're so bent on culture yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Common and Karis so One so you're, o- you're also uh, like a poet too yeah I do yeah, poetry a lot of people actually identify you for that more yeah than because there yeah. was a time actually you were so heavy with that with the poetry uh, yeah so where is that right now where are you with that yeah i'm still with it you know like, um like i said I'm, I'm evolving yeah there were times where i realized that um i needed to improve my writing skill mm. as a rapper i needed to um, sink in deeper so i ventured into poetry okay. you know okay. so i could um, express myself using different languages mm. and when i mean language is not lingual like different um use of how to use words yeah, to, to paint yeah. um, better pictures uh, so that was how i found poetry and while i was doing it people were like hey man this thing is really nice mm. we need you on the show we need you here i need you there and before you know it i was almost everywhere on different posters really doing more religious programs and all yeah uh, so at some point i had to had to pause and ask myself hey why did you even start this at the first place yeah you know are you doing this as a full-time thing or mm. you wanted to go and start to get your lessons and go back to what you feel your your call to do or your yeah. better art and so but the poetry is still there it's still in the rap you know mm. so yeah rap and poetry is still there now uh i usually ask this question yeah. like oftentimes if i'm around like creative guys okay like your creative process do you actually how how would you how would you say your creative process is like okay how do you come up with materials Hmm, hmm, hmm. okay in me trying to describe my creative process right now um let me use a word it's more like um bringing myself into reality okay yes yes yes, uh, it's mostly i get inspired mostly from um my life Mm-hmm. my thoughts that's my inner consciousness yeah uh, so when i spend time to maybe meditate on a particular theme at a point in time yeah you know um i look at how i can relate that thing with the next person probably that person is also thinking about that same thing at that time so how can we be on the same space mm. i don't know if you understand how yeah. can we go in the same space so describing my creative process would be me bringing myself into mm. reality into the world where i'm living in yeah you know a lot of times people don't uh, people see me afar mm. they don't really get to understand how i digest things mm. you know my line of thoughts and um, how i perceive 
okay. the world to be. Uh, so when I'm creating through that time, I make sure that um, this thing about me inside, my inner consciousness is, is revealed. Okay. You know, it's revealed. Okay. So whatever it takes for me to put that out, mm. I do it. Okay. You know, sometimes it involves me researching. I go ahead. And sometimes I, I have to have conversations with people. Whatever the research evo- uh, involves, yeah, I put it into. How is that too? Like performing your art? Uh, performing. Performance. Uh, like you said, performance. It's just about display, yeah? Yeah. Uh, so basically seeing how I can... Now this is uh, more like the physical sphere of the whole thing. Yeah. I have to display um, mm. what I've what I've written down, what I've, what I've produced, you know, yeah. just trying to see, bringing people into the same, it's the same thing I'm trying to say, bringing people into the same sphere, you mm. know, uh, so whatever gesture yeah. necessary for that, you know. Uh, so for performance, there's something I'd like to talk about, you know, I, there were times where I lost my freedom of uh, performing. I, I had stage where I'd go on and people would tell me, this is what I'm supposed to do. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. There was a time I was performing poetry. Um, the Emir of the state was around. Okay. Uh, so I was called to perform uh, one of the libraries there. So when I came in, before the, I, I had a a briefing before oh. the, the show. Okay, hey, um, Prime, this is what you're going to do. This is how you're going to do it. And this is what we're expecting. And so I asked the is guy. Is that, that healthy for like creativity it's not because that's boxing the whole thing yeah you know, uh, sometimes it, or is it like a royal poetry well, type <laughs> yeah I, I get it i understand because it was also it meant a lot to the guy who oh. was putting off the show because he had the email coming in and he came mm. so he he didn't want anything to go wrong he wanted everything to just be perfect so oh. when he called me and gave me a briefing i was like hey man I understand, but what if my my creative um, zest does not lead me to this? To um, doing that, yeah. He was like, "Man, please, I'm sorry. You have to just do." <laughs> I said, "Okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll do my best." Wow, you know, wow. I had a friend with me that I was just so I was not really free. I didn't enjoy the whole thing, but I had to do it because there were funds involved. Oh, and so I came. I was just standing in one place as though I was reciting a. You know, yeah, you were not really was free. That was not there. you. And so while I was performing, um, people enjoyed it. I, I, after everything, one of the professors that was there called for me. Mm. He said, you're a good poet. I like your use of um, words, you know, your lyrical display, but you were not doing your thing. He actually yeah, understood. and that was a professor, you know, and he was sitting very close to the Amia. And I said, I, I didn't have an excuse for that. And yeah. I learned a lesson. Yeah. I learned a lesson. Just just do your thing regardless of the briefing. Yeah. It's very yeah. important because you don't Actually. know who who would buy you for what you're doing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That professor took out time and realized that I was not being myself. Yeah. There's right. actually like a um, natural satisfaction. Yeah. And you it, know, it doesn't compare to anything. Like, this is what I want to do and you I actually get, did it. You get it. You yeah. get it. So, I, I lost out of that. So, but from that day, I learned I, I learned my lesson. I promised myself whenever I go on a stage, mm. regardless, man, I might tell you, yeah, it's good, it's good. Yeah, but you're going to do your thing. Yeah, uh, but when I go there, I just... That's how it should be. Just uh, do my thing. And since yeah. when I had been doing my thing and uh, people had always loved not just what I said, mm. but how I said it. Yeah. And it's important. You know, 30% is what you put out. Mm. 70 is how you put it out. True. Yeah. True. Some people True. are not as talented as you think they are, but mm. because of the energy they come yeah, up with. Yeah, actually. It's a whole thing. Like yeah, so it's very important yeah. in performance. It's very important. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's the, how. The arts and the... the, the c- act of creating it and having it ready yes yeah, yeah. it's just a low fraction yeah it's just, just a low fraction there's yeah. a lot to to it yeah. you are also heavy on like photography and a lot of people talk about you yeah. like yeah. i i see like um a lot of pictures with you okay. and you're quite creative like well making those pictures so like poetry uh rap, rap photography f- yeah like how do you manage to keep to all keep of the, that the circle yeah how I wish uh, it's poetry, something not rap, then photography. They're all peas. You know? ah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the circle. Yeah. Like I told you, remember the early question you asked about my creative process? And I said, uh, bringing myself into reality. Yeah. And whatever it took 
Mm. Yeah. So photography happens to also be one thing that I had to do yeah. to bring myself into reality. Mm. When I have clients, I don't just shoot them because they pay me money. Mm. I always ask myself, how can I, um, uh, you know, paint my picture into these people's life? How can I, how can, how c- by snapping this person, how can um, the people who view the picture, the person who sees the picture, yeah, you know, not just relate with the client, but also relate with the photographer. Okay. Yeah. And one thing I love about photography, it, it happens to make me meet a lot of people. Yeah. I learn a lot from people, you know, looking at their eyes, mm-hmm. seeing how people can be so timid, some so confident, Yeah. you know, some don't even know what they want. Yeah, I get you, you get to study a lot you of know, people. Yeah, so it has been very interesting for me. And right from time, even when I started rap, then you know, you you you, you remember back then mm. how we we're struggling with the whole artwork thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah actually, I, I you're had also a graphic designer. <laughs> 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 so you know, yeah, I actually, uh, let me say this: uh, yeah. uh, Rashid was <laughs> the person that actually designed my cover uh, for my first project yeah i yeah. remember that i remember yeah. that you know so i ha- i'd already had this love for art mm. right from time and when i mean art anything that has to do with creating mm. i don't like uh limiting myself you know basically for now i'm trying to also study some things about tech yeah so wow. with time to come i you might even hear that okay hey this rashid guy is not just doing a um, photography again Maybe now he's a web designer or... Wow, that, that, yeah. that, would, that would be lovely. Yeah, so what I'm trying to say is whatever entails creating, mm. you know, I don't have a problem with it. So as far as it's going to involve my inner consciousness mm. and I'm going to be able to tell a story of yeah. what I'm doing. Mm. And yeah, and so photography, you know, while I was rapping, I was not really... Uh, I needed to pay bills too. Yeah, you know, actually. Uh-huh. So I needed to pay some of my bills and all of that. So I needed to fund the rap. True. And then I realized that I could make um, a living from photography. Mm. And already, I had already been doing some things around it, you know. So I said, okay, why not venture a bit deeper into it? And mm-hmm. I realized that, yeah, you know, pictures also tell a lot. Sometimes yeah. there are many things you can't say using words, but when, it, when, you, when you have a good picture on ground, yeah you tell the story so yeah i've been working with clients i've had personal projects i'd never released any of my personal project online what, what personal project yes wow yeah yeah shocking yeah most very, of very the shocking. most most of the things i release are things clients um request me to do so uh you mean you actually take like you have like a project yeah like yeah. every you snap pictures yes because uh i have asked someone who is like a photographer okay and now um, my conversation with him was why do you guys only take pictures of people hmm. i'm like okay now let's say now the the most central place in in beehive right now okay. let's say maybe it's one team market yeah and um in 10 years time or in 20 years time it will look different yeah that's true and then maybe we don't really have like a picture of it of it through time yeah yeah so how about just Taking snapping like structures you know space streets like yeah i get that that's um you know i, I understand where you're coming from um first i think the photographer has to understand that or you also need to understand which i'm sure you're you're conversant with that the genres of photography they're different. Yeah, they're different genres. That's what they call the street photography, landscape, wildlife, different type. Yeah. And uh, as a photographer, it's also important to identify which you belong to. Okay. Now, immediately, a street photographer comes into Baochi, um, the beehive here. Yeah. He knows what to do. Okay. He knows where to be. He knows the kind of pictures to take and knows how to sell them. Wow. Yeah. When a portrait photographer comes into the state, he knows where to be, pictures to take, and how to sell them. A fine art photographer comes in, knows what to do. And so, yeah, that's very important. So when you are suggesting this kind of um, um, idea, you have to also look at the photographer you're suggesting it to. Does he or, or does he or she understand? Mm. Yes. Already in this in the city, there's um, there are a couple of people who are keen at doing that. Okay, maybe I've not come across yes, them. possibly. But there are people who are keen at doing that. And um, talking about 
um evolved like things changing there's mm-hmm. um there was this painter i i had the privilege of photographing he's, he's on my web he was on he was yeah still on my website okay and when I went to his house to take a portrait of him, he was very deep into this whole painting thing. He brought out books about lighting. And I was wow. like, wow. He, he sat us down, spoke to the thing. And then while I was photographing him, he told me something. He said, he said, hey, Prime, I just want to look like me. I wow. just I just want people to see me for me as a painter. And that man is about, he said he has been painting for about 40 years. Wow. In this city. So we stumbled um at a paint of the Emir Palace back at 19 something. Wow. He had the paint. I'd never seen how Bauchi, um, the city, just forgive me for liking to use the, <laughs> I've never seen how the city looked as of that time. Oh. Only in that paint. I saw the cars, you know, it was really beautiful. We tried to put out the paint for exhibition, nobody but. You don't understand. You understand. I, I was like, ah, this is the, you know, but nobody but it. And it's still back with him. And so it was really a privilege for me working with him. And yeah, any opportunity I get to exhibit those paints. And he was the one who inspired, you know, me trying to see how I can put out my body of works. I, mm. I showed him some of the things I did. He mm. was like, wow, you're really creative. Why are you not putting these things out? That's not my market. You mm. know, I need to take pictures people would see and say i would like to do this thing yeah paying me for it yeah but the ones i do as my personal pro- project you don't put it out i don't put it out because no. basically i'm looking at how to print them sell them maybe yeah. at, at a future exhibition I, or something i understand that i understand that so now um uh, what is uh what is your next musical project Hmm. When is it coming out when is it coming out what is next well there's a lot of things on ground um it's not really just about putting it out for me um i want to make sure it's well cooked very important yeah i want to make sure it's well cooked i want to make sure that i i i am better you know i want to make sure that my message is clearer okay yeah so basically i'm working with um i think two producers right now doing everything possible to see how the sound is going to relate how the sound is going to come out clear and yeah you do know. you do you actually um get beats or you really have like sounds in your head how do you like convey message to producers like yeah um, I'm, I'm, al- I'm allowed to call a producer's name here yeah sure sure yeah, see man <laughs> okay <laughs> you know? very I like, dope. I like that man yeah you know see man i like the man so he's like whenever i come around he's like he prime or rashid I need everything. I don't just explain everything from mm. the beginning to the ending. And I'd be like, doo, 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 doo. Mm, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You know? And, and everything, I think hip hop, uh, the culture mm. already entails everything. True. The element, mm-hmm. you know, the big boxing and all of that. And, and I think that it's important for you as an artist to be able to convey your message from start to, yeah, you know, yeah. From, from up to down. It's very important. So yeah, Basically, when I'm around them, I try to convey everything, mm. you know, both what I heard in my on my head or in my head, mm. how the whole rhythm was already, you know, I never know, I never knew that I would have um my tap count for myself, oh. you know. So whenever I go there, they know me. I'm the 85 guy. <laughs> Nobody, anything above that, I struggle with it. You I know, get, I get these it. were things I learned through time, listening to you know other rappers talk yeah watching their um, bts and mm. all of those things and i understood that yeah you ha- you have to create a working routine yeah you know not not really don't be so stereotyped but you need to create a working routine with your producer they should just know oh man this guy this is his tempo mm. he's very flexible doing at this point and so if, if, if you're on a collaboration they just know how to work with you okay you know and that would give you f- a flexibility in respect to how you put out your lyrics and all of that so yeah from start to finish 
a child to convey you, you to have like producer. a picture then you try to paint yeah, it yeah yeah, yeah. That's, that's what happens that's, that has i think w- um there was a, uh, one of the episodes we had like siman he was trying to explain this, this he was this saying some artists actually don't really know how to convey this message and yeah. it's making it difficult for, for them, them too yeah. yeah in fact i see the frustration on his face when i see um maybe sometimes i get yeah i don't understand he'd be like no yeah. man <laughs> <laughs> you I need guess, to explain guess, everything yeah. and all yeah so talking about when it's coming the approach i'm giving the whole music thing now it's not um like i said it's not about when it's coming mm. you know when we lost um a very amazing rapper Phil Chase. Yeah. You know, I, I seized the opportunity. I did a freestyle and I've seen people posted it yeah. quite a number of times and I was like, I didn't even know, you know. So, the approach I'm giving the music, the rap thing is I really want to take it professionally, you know. And yeah, certainly I'm going to be releasing records, but they are going to be timely. I get. Yeah, they're going to be timely. I, I, I need to find a need for them mm. then I put them out. I I have to find a need for them, then I put them out. So it will no longer be just about anticipating. Hey, I'm, no, 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 no. I need to look at what's happening at the season. Mm. Mm. When is the right time for the project to come out? Okay. And then, how about the timing? Like, uh, there's a lot of people that actually make music for yeah, yeah, for the moment. That's true. Like you said, you just did like a freestyle for Chase. Yeah. And um, you had to put it out mm. at that time. So. How about you making music like, and then because the of the timeline, yeah. yeah, that that's that's also in consideration actually. Okay, very important. Yeah. Yes, it's in consideration because I'm also an artist, so mm. people who um listen or enjoy what I do, yeah, should have at least a, a timeline of on when I release. Okay, uh, yeah. So I'm looking at ending of March. Mm. I have something that's supposed to drop for that time. Okay. Yeah. So, but um, y- um. In times past, I had this thing I did. I called Sixth. I don't oh. know if you would ever come across yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, release so. project on every of my birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I still won't stop. Okay, yeah. wow. The Sixth will continue. Already, I think I have uh, about uh, two or three of them already. Ready. Already. Wow. In the past. Oh, okay. The Sixth okay, already. Okay. So, yeah. Sixth is coming in this year too. Okay. Coming in next year. Can't wait. Yeah, so <laughs> it, it will. And, 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 and. Uh, Every of the project mm. would also tell about my evolving. Oh. Yeah. So all of the things I'm experiencing in life, mm. you know, from one of from my earlier birthday birthday to this one. Yeah. I would have to find a way to put them inside the project. I guess. Yeah. So most of them most of the project is more experimental. Mm. Yeah. So I remember sometimes I did a really um, native poetry um project and i released it on the sixth and people were like man this is really native mm. i'm like yeah that was <laughs> <laughs> that was what i needed to do at the time i guess i needed to understand what it, it felt like sounding that way writing that okay. project okay. you know yeah. i needed to learn the lesson i needed to make the research for that project and i learned a lot about the african culture mm. in fact that project led me to reading a book um how europe underdeveloped africa have you read that book no a very powerful book you should read it's very interesting i had to finish the book just for the project wow and, and i understood a lot of things about the african culture releasing that sixth project i had songs that were written to to mothers songs that were written for inner consciousness i had a song that were you know it's just there. It's on SoundCloud. Sixth. I'll yeah. check it out. Yeah, so I'll check it. So, uh, Rashid Dupram, thank you for coming. Culture thank you Talk. Thank you very much, man.